All right, we're going to get into the main event. It is the Division I Finals between Bayport and Horlick, a rematch of last year with Bayport coming out on top. Horlick definitely looking to take it away from him. A little bit of rivalry going on here. And we're going to start it off on Ilios. This should be a good matchup here for the Division I High School Finals here between Bayport and Horlick. Let me hear it out for both teams. Give us some time. All right. Kind of energy. This is for the title of best in this state, and we'll see how it goes just as soon as we have the heroes out here. Four seconds and counting. We'll see what everyone's choosing to run. This is going to be a pro Harley crowd here. All right, we're getting ready to put together the attack. 10 seconds left to get into this. As the pro receive crowd is bringing the Harlech chance in, and we are about to get started with the Division I Finals. As they are underway and let go between Harlech and Bayport. Bayport is in the blue, Horlick is in the red. Both charging towards the control point. Gonna be in the middle, a bit of spam coming through. Fire Strike being eaten by Horlick. They're already on the point, a lot of damage being backed up a little bit. Bayport takes control of the point, a lot of damage being exchanged already. Zarya Charge built up already, that's a lot. A lot of damage to contend with. No one has died yet, he was doing a great job. Just a bit of spam being exchanged. There's the first kill, Reaper's gonna take out the Reinhardt. Zarya takes out the Immortality Field, and that is off to a strong start for Bayport. And it's gonna be a big start for them, especially, especially here to start off the finals match. And they need to keep the momentum going quickly, quickly to keep their title and get both titles here today to be the only team, since there was only one Smash Division, to get both Smash and Overwatch titles and to shut out Racine Unified School District from all the Overwatch titles. Absolutely, winning this would mean that Bayport takes both the Smash and the Overwatch title here today, as well as the back-to-back -back wins, but there's a lot of exchanges going through. Bayport getting kills left and right, burning ultimates, but they're for good use, pushing Horlick back, can't even get out of that initial spawn area. They're not even holding on the point, they're holding up top, and that's a team kill. Yeah, they're getting that top side to be able to keep control of that area, area and preventing Horlick from getting any pressure onto that point and allowing them to start on their capture phase. And without, without that, Precinct Horlick is falling further behind in this first map. Certainly are, but the Deadeye is available from a Kree on the defense as well as the offense. We'll see which one can work better. The Earth Shatter is available though, being used currently. Let's see if they get anything out of it. Kills going through both ways, mainly in favor of Vapor. They're pushing them back a little bit more, and they are winning yet another fight. Seems like Horlick can't get anything done, can't even get close to the point, and there are still ultimates available on the Vapor side, good. too. This is where you start to worry if you're Horlick. That's going to be five. Take it out of there for, for we're seeing Horlick. Okay, that's going to be a problem when they try to move down further, as we're going to get very close to that 100% end mark, and we might have to see an overtime before we get that last chance there for Horwick to try to take this, this first, first round uh, and not give themselves a hold to start off this finals. Multiple alts being popped, but it looks like Horwick has the advantage in the fight. Many kills going their way, that's three, that's half the team gone already. Graviton Surge going through, gonna finish off, and that should allow them to take the point right in the nick of time, right as it was about to go towards Bayport. Reset, and now they have to hold it. It's going to give Racine Horlick their first good control of this game. And we've seen a bunch of 99% before, but they're catching up quickly to be able to try to score. And now they're moving up into 15% here. Here, And Racine Horlick is back into it. Yeah, even the kill coming out on the Zarya. Sorry with the coalescence, easy pick, it's just staggering that there's a death blast in there, it doesn't look like it's going to get anything, just a kill on the Reaper but nothing else, a lot of old, uh, all usage being expended for not a lot of game, we'll see if Bayport's able to take it back, Her Shatter comes in, doesn't really find a lot, and it looks like Horlick has turned it around, they're giving the Bayport their own special, holding them back away from the point, can't even get close to it, and they still have ultimates available for this continued defense as well. It's going to be huge for them that they got this, as now they got the three ultimates ready to go to get this next defense going, and they might be able to steal this map if they can be able, able to use those ultimates correctly and put it together a cohesive defense. 
can see how well they're utilizing the map, forming these natural choke points. That's why they're not fighting on the point, but there's a lot of coalescence going on. A lot of damage dead eyes being popped as well. Will it get through the barrier? That's a double right there. Coalescence helping out a lot. Multiple ults being expended, but it looks like Bayport might have it. A lot of ults still got to go through, but they just can't get them off. They just fall. And it looks like Bayport will be able to take it back. Let's see if Bullock is able to contest or if it will just be the stage. That's going to allow them to take the first round. And they made a good push to finish that off. And they hang on to finish the round. They are up 1-0. Props to Horlick for coming back on that, maintaining their cool with that 99% on the point. They managed to get it up to 70%. Couldn't quite hold it, couldn't quite utilize those ultimates, but it was a good try. And let's see if they can do better on this second stage. We're going to see how they do better on this next point here. Here, it'll be the tower in the center of the screen in here. And it should it'd be a good defense to see how how we're seeing Horlick can change their strategy or maybe to change their composition of champions to try to add tight series up. And you mentioned changing champions. I, oh, I saw a Bridget briefly, but it looks like it's going to be swapped out to the Moira. A lot more condensed healing, a little bit of AoE with those orbs that she can throw out. And that does go through barriers, so that can help against the Reinhardt. Not so much on the Zarya, though. We'll see how it manages to play out for her. That will help that out. If they could be able to do so, and they are waiting, waiting for the control point to open right here, and that's going to be a knock away. They're going to take out a couple here. Here at Baypoint, and the receive ends are giving, hearing off, and they are happy with the performance. They're seeing the start off round number two, and it looks like that receive Horlick is going to take control of the point to start off. Yeah, just charging forward, so much focus fire on that single Reinhardt. He definitely wasn't ready for that. I don't think Baypoint was ready for that, and they're caught off guard, and that is the point removed from their control. Yeah, they're not going to put in the team fight. Team fight here gets the elimination here, knocked away. Yeah, he's trying to make a flag off to the right hand side. Is he going to pick somebody off? Oh, he's not able to. He's going to try to slide it in. Bayport trying to pick somebody off. He's got one. He's trying to go for another. Bayport has taken the point and absolutely flawless rush into the point to get, get them back control. I don't think they dropped a single person. That was absolutely perfect. Not a ton of alts being expended either. Perfect take back of the point. We'll see if Horlick is able to respond in the same. Only a coalescence on the side from the defense, but they can still be effective alt. Same thing actually available for Horlick. We'll see which one ends up being better. Both tanks going at it. A lot of damage being exchanged. The Doomfist does get the pick on the McCree. That's a lot of damage out of the equation, but the Reinhardt evens the score. Lucio, of all things, gets it back. He gets a boob off, and the coalescence is too strong. Bayport will take that fight just barely. That is a good defense. That's a big, big deal that they were able to get this one and you continue to move forward and give themselves a larger lead as they try to take map number one. They already won the first round. They want to win the second round and keep this point and raise it up to 100% to try to win it. Yeah, it looks like we have a swap out to the Mei, who can be very good on this point. It is not very large, and her ultimate ability, should she be able to charge it up, does cover the entire point and turn around a team fight by itself. Bayport does have ult up. They're going to use that for Shatter to try and slow the push, but it looks like Horlick is able to turn it a little bit. Reaper gets that initial pick on the right card, and that's a lot of your shield and just out of the way. So much CC to grab on search coming out, though, going to turn the fight back in Bayport's favor. And it looks like it's going to do just that with a stave off the push by Horlick. You always got the stun right there. Knocked out a couple more. Can they finish it off? It's a one on two. Make it now. Oh, Bayport is going to file in. And they're going to knock out, out Racine, and they're going to retake the point for themselves. Yeah, close close attempt. They got a decent amount of uh, percentage on the point, but couldn't quite like flop that control over. However, the Reaper did get his Death Blossom available in the course of that fight, and we should be able to see that in conjunction with Coalescence. Maybe the sound barrier can use from Bayport to keep it alive, but that still could be a lot of damage. So hard press to deal with that. Oh, yeah, no, that was not a good defense. And Horley gets by the people in defense. They absolutely flanked them around. And now they've got control without even a challenge on a team fight. Reaper's not going to get the teleport off. It's going to be denied over and under this Multiple kills. There's the Graviton search on the back from Horley. A lot of condensed focus fire on there. The Zarya Shield keeping them alive for now. A lot of kills going back and forth. It looks like Bayport has the edge on it. Again, as long as they capture, they should have this point. It would bring it to overtime. We'll see if Horlick is able to contest. They are close to the point. It's going to give them the first map, and they finish it off in style. Bayport wins game number one, and they take the series 1-0. Yeah, 
Yeah, just excellent plays by both teams all around. Bayport just edging it out in each fight just a little bit more. Covert with this Doomfist had an absolutely insane play, getting a couple kills really opening up that fight for them. They did that perfectly. It worked out well. Now, Racine Horlick tried to get something going with the defense, but they flanked around, and that somehow worked, worked for them. And when Bayport did not realize that, but they couldn't finish it and just should and get that team fight to work out for, for them and then maybe that's why they tried that yeah pretend, i think that's especially right and i think with the hybrid map coming up we might see horlick be able to take it because it did look like they had some pretty strong pushes like continuous pushes instead of just the decisive team fight wins that bayport was having and i think that might lend itself more to the payload side of this map and that might be how to decide this map. Let's see what they're going to pick for the, for the map for Hybrid and see what strategy they use or the composition of the champions to put together to try to win. Yeah, I'm curious to see how they approach it. Are we going to see Hollywood or is it something else? Uh, this, yeah, it's going to be Hollywood. The stream can't see it because the uh, logo is right over the map selection. <laughs> That is true. Looks like they are going to select King's Row, though, for the second map. We have seen this a couple times. Again, it has that first point around the corner, and then as soon as they, as soon as soon the attacking team acquires that, they must push the cart all the way to the end of the map or as far as they are able with the defense trying to prevent that from happening. All right, they're going to pick King's Row for this matchup. We've seen this quite often. It's a, it's a map that a lot of teams like to use, and it seems to be pretty even, it seems like. It certainly does, and there seems to be a pretty established pattern for how teams break into this first point here. Oftentimes, we'll see the Symmetra teleport up onto that shadow or that statue, and it's so hard to deal with as a defense. You just have to back up around the corner and concede at least contested the point initially, and that's where the true fight begins for it. Other times, we might see the Bastion spam come through, see if that can have a factor in it. I'm curious to see how the teams are going to decide to approach it. And we're going to see how that works out for them. They try to move in. The heroes are about to assemble, but what kind of composition do you want to see from, from both these teams? It's hard to say. I would like to see the Symmetra strat, or at least something that lets the offense just get onto the point immediately. And it looks like Horlick's going to be on offense, and they're running the Doomfist. Doomfist, Lucio, Moira. So they, they can get to the point fairly rapidly, but they do have to approach behind that Reinhardt, so it's not going to be just the instant sprint to the point. I'm curious to see how this will play out because the Bayport is running Ana, so they can turtle a little bit on defense, just hide behind those barriers and spam through with them. Oh, yeah. They're going to try to put together the defense that it will work out for them. Horlick does not want to go down 2 0. They want to try to be able to get control early and then keep that control to keep the momentum rolling to be able to take this map. And we're going to see how they do that in the attack phase for Horlick. Is they're going to start on attack, and then it'll be Bayport on the defense. We're going to see an early sleep on the Reinhardt. That's, that's just disheartening if you see that. Going to delay their push a little bit. Farstrike's coming through, and the return is actually oh. going to take out the Reaper. That's a huge pick immediately into the round. That's going to stave off the offense, at least slightly. Yeah, it's not, not, not the greatest start, I would say, for Horowitz, but they're trying to get something going. Maybe this will develop out into a better plan. They'll uh, get something to work out for them. Maybe, maybe it's just a more slowly developed plan, but right now it doesn't seem to be working so far. Oh, they got the stun. Yeah, the stun's being exchanged from both sides. And that's how the not work out for them. We see Oryk is retreated. They're going to pick him off. They got both of the, And they got a retreat back, and they are not going anywhere. And not only did they hold off that offensive push, but more importantly, they prevented a lot of alt charge from being gained on the side of Like They only have the Coalescence coming up. Earth Shatter should be available next, but it still will be a little bit. Meanwhile, Bayport has the Earth Shatter available. They almost have the Amplification Matrix, and they're about 70% of the Earth House. So. And there's the Earth Shatter coming through. You see how devastating that is. Just multiple kills raining down. Doofus has to punch away, and they're forced back into spawn and back to the draw board. Force them back into that spawn that didn't help them out too much. Trying to get something going, but they still cannot get that, that alpha objective. And if they cannot get that, that then it's going to be very easy for Bayport to win this match. Absolutely, but they do have the Earth Shatter available, and they did pick off the Sigma. Not sure how it's going to be with that. However, Borlick is pushing to have the 
possession of this side room here. But the Doomfist Meteor Strike Ooh. comes through for three kills and shuts any hope of a push. That could be a nominee for the play of the game there. Are we getting three at once? That is difficult to do. And that's gonna be, be troubling as now they are trailing and they are running out of time. And they're gonna have definitely less than four minutes. And if they can't get it quickly, they will might have less than three minutes for the payload. Eat up more time on Bayport's side. However, finally Horlick is getting some of their ultimates available. Maybe not. Getting the healing with the coalescence coming through. Let's see if we can get a decent Earth Shadow. Earth is trying hard to physically down. Looks like they're pushing him off. Horlick has reversed it a little bit. There's the Earth Shatter. Denies the charge on the Reinhardt, but it's a dead eye coming through and they just right back in the respawns. Yeah, they're trying to use the play there. That may look like it was going to work originally, and they're going to use the ultimate. Pulled it up, and they have picked him off, and they cannot get past this Bayboard defense, and they are on fire right now. And once again, that team kill bell rings out. That's the third or fourth time we've heard it this map. That's got to be brutal if you're on the attacking side, and so disheartening. Bully has to find a way to break through this iron defense coming through from Bayport. They do have a couple ultimates where Bayport has none. They might get a decent graviton search here. We'll see how it turns out. And they might be open. They're seeing goes out. I think this is going to be working out right now for Horlick. And they finally got something going here. One under the defense here. And the rest of the team is going to have to get back quickly as Horlick is trying to get hit that first tick tick right there. And they're going to go for the second. And they're going to finally get that last ass tick tick and move in. And they're not going to have a lot of time for the first part of the payload. But they're going to at least going to get one point. Exactly. Even though it used almost the entire time for them to get it, at least they got the point, giving themselves a chance. They have two and a half minutes to push this payload. They can hopefully get it to the next checkpoint, and we'll see what they can make with it. Props to them for managing to take the first point. Yeah, with that, they can be able to try to kind of move it down. At least gets some length going onto it, but without that length that they don't have, uh, because they don't have as much time, this might be difficult if that Bayport defense holds up like it did for most of the second half. They just oh. get Wombo 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 comboed with all six ultimates oh. being popped. The Tisa Doofist holding onto theirs. They don't need him. It's another team kill that's going to come through. Maybe. He's hiding in the corner. We'll see if they fish him out. Uh, you don't want team kills. Those could be a miscommunication that you saw from here. And they're trying to get something going. It is working out for them. Let's see what they can do about it. But that was a lot of ultimates burned from Bayport's side, so maybe Hoyle can come through. They do have the Meteor Strike, they do have the Earth Shatter. They have something to work with. Batista all being popped. There's the Earth Shatter. Oh. Huge, huge Earth Shatter coming through. A lot of damage, a lot of CC. Can they clean up? It's one kill, it's two kill, it's three kills, four kills. Can they pick up the fifth? There it is. Oh, and is stunned. there a team kill to be had? Sigma's fighting. And there's the team kill. There it is. They got it going. Oh, now they're going to be able to move this payload. They might be able to get this second point here. Or at the minimum, they're going to get at least the payload around this corner. And get very close to the B site right, to get that second point, which they need this because of the amount of time they have left. Because if they don't, they're going to be in big trouble. Huge dead eye coming out from Bayport. Doomfist still has his ultimate too. I don't foresee Horlick like, taking this point. They're being pushed back. Doomfist just bullying the supports. He's going to actually ult away. Just want to overextend, want to stick with his team. Smart play. And he's going to go on the flank. Right, let's see how this goes. Remember down 30 seconds left. They're really close. If they could get it past that point, they got some extra time. And they might get all three despite the amount of time they're taking. But they gotta make this attack work out right now and right now. All the sport also can through coalescence, nano boost, and we see a death blossom. He's gonna get stunned, he's not gonna get to use it! Huge stop from, oh. from Bayport, just using that utility so effectively. That is not something you want to see when they get stunned out. And they are putting it to Horlick, and they are going to stop them. They only get one. They do push the cart most of the way towards the second point, but they do not get it. So that is an opportunity that Bayport could look to capitalize on. We'll see if Horlick can mount as solid of a defense as Bayport had. 
All right, so for Bayport, they just need 105.38 meters, about 300, about 315 feet to win this in this match after getting the alpha objective. Yeah, and I'm curious to see if we're going to see any mix-ups in composition here, see what wasn't working, or if they're going to elect to run with it. Just waiting for those heroes to be revealed. Waiting for the heroes to assemble for each team. About five seconds before we get to it. And let's see what the composition comes out for the. And is it more of a standard composition for this round? Uh, not at all in terms of Bayport. I'm seeing a Farah and a Genji. We'll see if they swap off before that attack phase actually happens. But that to me signals they are just going to rush the point. Set that Far Mercy in the air and just rain fire from above. Meanwhile, on Orlick's side, they have more of the standard comp. We've been seeing all day. They have the Doomfist, they have the Reaper. So much close range damage to hide behind the protection of the Sigma and the Reinhardt. We'll see which works out better. Will not be kept we'll see how the defense there. works out for them. Yeah. And, and we'll figure out after that if, if Bayport can, can bring in the attack that they use well in the first game and see if they can apply that to the second game after having a pretty good defense in the, in the first half of this match. We're going to see Widowmaker pick. Going for the early snipe. I'm going to make it the captain. Oh, electing to stick with the Widowmaker. This is an interesting call. Great play by Bayport. Can he get any picks over the barriers? Not going to find anything just yet. So many shields coming through. Just fishing for something, meanwhile her defense is pushed into that corner. And there's the far, just so much damage with the Mercy. Standing right over the site, they almost got that first tick right away, but it doesn't look like they're going to do Oh, they are picking off Horlick, and they're going to easily, they might get all three ticks. Yeah, absolutely, completely wiped them. Reinhardt actually getting Earth Shatter in that first push, getting so much ult charge off that, and then you see just immediate usage and just a full wipe. But they only need the 135, 105.38 meters. They do not need to get that second point. They just need to get to that yellow mark. Arger showing on the top of the screen, and when they get it there, they will win this match. And now it's on Horlick to show what they're made of to try and put a stop to this relentless assault. Can they deal with the far up? They have swapped to some hit scan to try and deal with that real threat shift. Barrage available. We'll just barely get out of the coalescence. Playtime getting players more regularly coming through. There's the bit of flux and just under the They got a couple there knocking out some of the that, but they're rolling down quickly. And there's a number, a few more taken out of Horlick. And they're going to continue to move this even further forward. And they are, and they have got, got some progress. This far is just absolutely eating through the entire Horlick defense. They just got a triple barrage all into a double, just far rocket. And they're marching straight for that point. Horlick has to come barreling in. They do have Gravitic Flux available on the Sigma. They have a Meteor Strike coming into the Doomfist. Will they be able to reach it? They should be able to contest as a group. They have at least one last team fight left on them. We'll see the Gravitic Flux. Right. Oh, but the first oh. comes out on the side of Bayport. Preventing it from going through. Shields being exchanged on both sides. Res is being exchanged as well. Neither team has the upper hand right now. It's just chaos. Or like he's pulling slightly ahead of that far again, providing so much damage. Don't worry about them. They get another elimination out there, and uh, and Horg is going to hold for the beginning time. But they get oh, they actually do get one out, another one out, and Horg holds holds for the meantime. But they still got a lot of time left and not a lot of distance to work with. Yeah, it's kind of staving off the inevitable at this point. There is still so much time, three and a half minutes for Bayport to make a play on this cart. But that was step one, Chief. Hold that first push, and now you got to do it a few more times. One step at a time. There is an Ash available that's been swapped over to on Bayport's side. A lot of snipers, a lot of long range damage coming in. We'll see if they're able to make use of it. And there it is. Picks off the McCree instantly before the fight even really starts. But do so, oh, gets out of all oh, they take it all all five that could, I can make that six and they're just gonna push the payload right into the goal and they are going to take this match and they're gonna be up two to nothing. And 
Bayport looking at home on King's Row. Going home to sip their cups of tea. They will take it. They're up 2-0 in the series after that. Now they are one match away from winning the Division 1 state title. That's crazy. If, you, if you're Horlick, you gotta find some way to come back in this third round. See this Ryan play the game. That was a huge earth shatter. Ton of damage. Everyone's on the ground and just the cleanup. Big win for them. Got a little bit of BM at the end. <laughs> crowd not happy about that one. Yeah, the pro scene crowd really did not like that. See which escort map we pick up on this next one. This is a must win for Horlick. If Bayport wins this, they will win the championship. If Horlick wins this, they can start their reverse sweep in order to take it. It's going to be a long run, but they can do it. They can do it. And they have shown throughout this Overwatch season that they can do it. The question is, will they be able to collect themselves together and actually be able to start? Especially under so much pressure. We'll see if they're able to. It looks like it is going to be Gibraltar this time around. We had the scene in this matchup once before. Let's see if that's going to work out and get this going for the reverse sweep to start out for Horlick, or will Bayport just finish this off? We'll have to wait and see. I'm not sure what to expect from this map. We've seen a lot of good plays from both teams. It just looks like overall Bayport has taken it. We'll see if Horlick is able to do anything on this map. Yeah, they're gonna have to figure out how that's gonna work out. And they look like they are ready to go. Well, we are underway for game number three. This is the escort map. It is just the payload. Push it to the end. That's, that's it. That's the only objective. You are to see that cart through to the finish. And we'll see if Horlick is able to do such a thing. As I believe they are starting on offense. That's true. There's a lot of parents that might not understand some parts of Overwatch. I just might give them a little bit of understanding on how the game is going and what their kids are playing. Yeah, so the main basis that we're going for here is that each time your character damages or heals or does something useful, they build up their ultimate charge, which is a hugely impactful ability that they're able to use. The team has to work together and coordinate the usage of those to take the objectives, in this case, pushing the payload or defending the payload all the way to the end of the map. And it requires working together, coordinating, picking out targets, and just a high degree of skill to execute correctly. They're putting together a hero set. How do you think this hero set is going to play out and mesh with each other when they're trying to counters? Oh, I see. Well, we're seeing the Hanzo come out from both sides, which is interesting and something I don't think we've seen yet is a Hanzo mirror match here. We'll see if they're able to get through the Orisa barriers. Double barrier run coming out from the offensive side, so they're trying to provide a little bit of support to their DPS, something to hide behind. Another pro Horlick chat break it out. This, maybe that would get, give them a little bit of a confidence boost here. They are going to be starting off on the attack here. They are in the red. Bayport is in the blue. And they are already pushing it quite far right away. They bring it under the tunnel and looks like they're going to bring this right back up. They are moving quickly. Yeah, a lot of forward pressure already here. No one's died, but they moved this card so close to the first point. Tease all this is going to be popped already. Not only was it charged, but it was God. Hanzo's going to get a nice headshot onto the Reaper. Trying to keep things out. This one for the Bayport. We'll see if we're going to go back. A lot of damage coming through with the healers. Keeping it all back. McCree's up on the high ground, sniping at them. They're being used on both sides here. No further kills coming through. Just a lot of damage being exchanged and healed back up. Now the field going to come down to the side of Bayport. They're getting pretty close to that A. A position drive that will give them their first point. And right now they're just outside it. Here comes the attack. They got a couple of ultimates ready to go. Ready to go. Both sides got in there. Getting a couple of kills rocked in. They're getting something to go. And Bayport is 
getting shredded here. And they are really trying to push that out, but those ultimates are canceling each other out and they're not moving anywhere. Yeah, and at this stage you can really see that actually at this first point the attackers have that respawn advantage. It doesn't take as long to get to the point. The Vidic Flux is going to come through, not going to fully complete the job on that Orisa. But uh, ultimately through. And that Hog's going to be picked off. Bayport has managed to save up the push though. A lot of resources being spent on both ends, but it looks like Horlick likes to back away. Save a couple ults that they have charged up, and we'll try and come in again as another coordinated assault. Oh, there's yes. something. Oh, what a shot right there. And that was on target. Okay. That's gonna really help them get a little bit of time. I'm off this clock and try to chew it out. And Bayport actually swapping over to the Genji. Let's see how that plays out there. Can get a pretty decent reflect on that Hanzo to be a kind of thing that the Genji is going on. There is Death Blossom available for Horlick to we'll see if they can make anything happen with it. Whole Hog is gonna be top in the side of Bayport though, just pushing those up. Attackers attack, pinning him against the wall. Can't quite finish the job though. Too much movement coming through. Good job from the supports on Harley. But that Orisa is going to get taken out. No fortify available. The hook will connect and the shot will go. <laughs> that shot connected and it's working out quite well. They can't move it anywhere very much. Oh! A little bit of 1v1 going on between the DPS up above everybody, and that's what we were talking about, that Genji can take out that Hanzo fairly effectively. The deflect is such a strong tool for that hero. Was very strong tool. They just couldn't get it to work, however. They're all going to use the same aim area. They're going to try to make a go rush at one point to try to move this forward. And try to get it to the end, but right now it's not going anywhere. CP up behind the whole team. He has Death Blossom available. We'll see if he can get into an opportune moment to use it. No, like to fade back out, trying to find an opportune moment. They do have coalescence and sound barrier as well. Did I mean pop to just take him back? That sound barrier is gone. The three has taken out the Lucio. A lot of ults being popped on both sides now. Supercharger coalescence going through. A lot of kills exchanging back and forth. So much damage well. done from the assault and the supercharger from Orisa. Death Blossom's not even going to get to go for Reaper's already taken out, and it looks like the port will be able to hold off this one as well. Yeah, it looks like they're going to get it as well. They got to make a one last push. They got a couple of ultimates if they want to be able to use them. Got to use them quickly. They got about, about five seconds. Can they get a couple of eliminations to get this contested? At least push it over time. time. And it looks like they cannot. Oh, they still got a chance. They're going to move it. They are going to. Oh, it's still good. Oh. They're going to try and finish it off. Get at least one point. So they're much, less so than. They're about well. 10 feet away. They get together, the guy is still contested. A four on three. Here comes the rest of Park to try to push it in. They got a little bit further, about still a little under 10 feet left to go. Trying to finish this off, give Horling an opportunity. And right now, great out foul. Oh, he's got great. They cannot get it. Bay 4 is going to hold on as as they are basically doing mop-up duty to finish this off. They will not get be able to score, and Horlick is in a load of trouble. If there's ever a time to turn on as Horlick, it is now. They need to hold this point. They can't even let Bayport get the single first control point or, or checkpoint, or it's over, and they will be the state champions. We'll see if they're able to do it if they can dig down deep enough and mount a solid defense, or if Bayport will overwhelm them and take the title. See if they're going to be able to do so with this. 83.13 meters stands between Bayport and the Division I State Overwatch Champions. And as we're getting into the hero reveal, counting down with five, four, three, two, one. one. Let's see what they have. Let's see what the composition is bringing out for both sides. Yeah, gonna elect to go with the dive comp on the offense for Bayport, just trying to get to that first point and get to it quickly. They've got the Genji, they have the Winston, they have the Moira. We'll see if it pays off for him. Meanwhile, trying to, on the defensive side on Horlick, trying to hide behind that Orisa shield, maybe get the picks with the Roadhog and snipe him with the Hanzo. Do you think Horlick will try to elect to move with the defense a little bit closer than what Bayport did in, in the first half of this, especially when they don't have that huge room to work with? 
Yeah, it is a possibility. It's such a double-edged sword because if you move it closer and you die or you struggle to hold it, there are the faster respawns. You could have a weaker position, but if you manage to shut it down, you can very much prevent them from gaining any ground whatsoever. We'll see if that will be the case here. Here they're trying to move. They moved it pretty quickly. They're at 20 meters, 25 meters. They're getting. They are moving pretty quick, but I think Horowick is allowing to get them that that little bit of leverage, and so they can drop down and pin them inside the tunnel. And it looks like we're going to see another fast push of this payload. Both side, both times the defense has elected to let it get into this underground area before attempting to hold on that corner. It gives them a much more naturally defensive position in order to do it, but so much damage coming through from Alfonso. He's going to pick off the immortality field, and that Genji is going to just punch him. Yeah, they're going to punch him out. They're going to knock out yet another one. There's four, five, and they're going to get them all, and this could be it. They are going to bring the payload in, and Bayport is your Division I state champion for Overwatch. Congratulations to Bayport. Both teams well played, but in the end, they took the match, and they ran with it. We'll get to see one final play of the game, a Moira one, beautiful coalescence, a lot of damage, a lot of healing and just a perfect way to cap off this final. Perfect way to cap off the final, and the perfect whack, perfect time to cap off this day here, and it is going to be Bayport that's going to get the win over, over Racine Harlick. Up next will be the trophy presentations for the Division One Overwatch 